Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are here with some really talented artists, uh, and we're going to talk about some amazing artwork. Uh, so we really appreciate everyone uh, joining us uh, to hear these fascinating insights into how these artists make their work and what inspires them. Uh, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And we are so thrilled to be able to present uh, the exhibition Shared Wonders, Timeless Exploration at the Silk Purse Arts Center here in West Vancouver, featuring uh, three amazing artists uh, who are with us this evening, uh, Douglas Creer, Nada Shoje, and Linda Safidi. And we're gonna get to hear all, all from them later, uh, their inspirations, their techniques, uh, what drives them, it's gonna be pretty thrilling. Uh, so Shared Wonders is uh, on display at the Silk Purse Art Center in West Vancouver uh, until April the 2nd. Uh, so please come on by and uh, see, see this fantastic artwork in person. Uh, I'm coming to you live uh, from the gallery. You can see some of the artwork behind me. Uh, and I am so uh, pleased uh, to be here uh, in West Vancouver on what is the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Um, here in particular, the Squamish Nation, the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and the Musqueam Nation. And we are incredibly grateful to our host nations, neighbors, and community members for their stewardship of these beautiful lands uh, since time immemorial. So art is what we're here to talk about. Uh, first, we're going to uh, meet uh, each of our artists. Uh, they're gonna tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, before we get to that, um, if you have any questions or comments for them, you can drop those uh, in the chat and we will get to them uh, closer to the end of this uh, dynamic conversation. Uh, so Shared Wonders was put together, um, we have uh, for the Silk Purse, the Arts Council puts together a jury uh, every year to determine the following year's uh, exhibitions. And these three artists were paired together um, because of their beautiful, graceful uh, artwork uh, that speaks to uh, a number of levels of contemplation, meditation, connection, community, the earth, uh, culture, um, and their uh, heavy focus on design. Uh, so we're going to get to hear all about that uh, coming up. So let's meet our fantastic artists. Uh, let's go alphabetically. So let's go with Doug. Doug, why don't you uh, tell everyone a bit about yourself? Thanks, Stephen. I'd just like to start by uh, thanking West Van Art Council, all the judges, uh, the, the volunteers, and especially you, Stephen, for putting this together. I really appreciate it. And uh, as well, the Salish people for letting us show up our work on their ceded territories. Uh, myself, I've been doing art for a few years now. I've just I feel like I'm at the beginning of a process. And uh, personally, I like to merge uh, traditional techniques with modern technology. And as you can see, I'm displaying my uh, CNC machine behind me here, where I utilize the different techniques for carving things that a lot of people actually don't even know how it's, it's even done. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm blessed to live in West Vancouver with my young family. And I, I'm, I, like I said, I, I'm at the beginning of my career and I, I'm thanking for the opportunity. Oh, well, thanks so much, uh, Douglas, for uh, a little bit of background. And thanks for showing us your shop. That's great to see. I think we're gonna see a few more uh, tools uh, from the rest of our artists. Uh, so next is Netta. Netta, would you please uh, introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, West Van Art Council. And thank you, everybody who was involved to put this together and for the exhibition to be up. I'm so grateful to be part of this with all of us three using our shared wonders and timeless exploration of our arts and inspirations. So, um, I, I, I go a little bit of more story about myself. So I was uh, born and raised in Iran. So I got uh, familiar with uh, calligraphy starting at grade five. 
inspiring by the very beautiful teacher who was uh, trying to um, give us some practice every day. So I got encouraged and I started going to classes since I was in grade six. So I continued uh, this journey with a traditional um, calligraphy and which is called Nastalic, the uh, script. And um, I got certified for that. Then later I moved to Canada and then um, I was a little bit disconnected, connected with this um, far zone and not accessing to like uh, teachers. And then uh, when COVID hit, so I got some more time because it's not my job. Uh, this is my hobby. So I, as a job, I do an IT project manager type of job. So I got connected again and I tried to modernize it and use some more colors and trying to do it more abstract to be able to connect and speak and um, hopefully <laughs> attract more uh, people. I don't wanna have just specific audience. So I, I, I love if some other more people look at my work and to do some connections and enjoy them and give some feelings or peace or whatever it speaks to them. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Netta, for, for sharing. Uh, yeah, I think uh, a theme of connection uh, is definitely uh, something common um, throughout all of your work and sort of your thesis for why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to meet Linda. Linda, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Linda. I'm an artist here in Vancouver. I carve, paint, draw, make prints. Lately, I've branched into ceramics and glass. Uh, I graduated from Emily Carr College, and I worked in graphics for many years. But uh, about a decade ago, I moved back to Vancouver, and I've been resuming, rebooted my fine art practice since then. And during that time, I was uh, mainly associated with uh, Malaspina printmakers on Granville Island. And my current work um, is coming from that experience. So the materiality of my work, um, the textures, the um, techniques, the materials, this is very important to me. And I love to experiment and tinker. Um, I want there to be an, a visual pleasure, an aesthetic to it. Um, so the current work that I'm doing is what I call dimensional paintings. And this grew out of a, a embossed paper prints I was making. I was um, making these paper prints and the embossment was compelling, but I found it uh, lacking because it was not sculptural enough. But looking at the plates I was carving to make the prints, I was really struck by the beauty of those. And then I had this idea of, why don't I use that as the basis for the painting? And this is what um, I've been doing for the past year and a half. And I've got a uh, doodle to show you. This is what I carve. This is a material called uh, Sintra. And I use wood carving tools such as this. And this is the basis for the paintings that I do. Um, I sometimes create sculptures as well that I apply to the, the board. So the texture both goes in and it comes out. And I find this way of construction very compelling because the image, pardon me, this is both an image and an object. The piece, uh, it draws you in with the illusion because it's painted, but yet it is a sculptural object, so it pulls you back. So there's this tension between the two. You're in that in-between space. And I, I find it very exciting um, because it really reflects also the concept of my work. It reinforces it. So um, yes, I guess that's it for now. Awesome. I have a question for you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm wondering, do you do the designing first or do you go freely and do your carving uh, for your works? Well, that's an excellent question because I plan, but only to a certain point. I will get a basic concept, but you know, it's the execution of the work, the, the happy accidents that really makes something great, I find. Because I can't plan in my head the full thing. 
I want there to be experimentation. I want to be responding to what I do. And when I do, I push the boundaries further and I end up with results that I don't always expect. Sometimes it takes me a long time to look at something to get a resolution, but uh, it's just a process. Nice, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great questions already. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for sharing uh, that little insight into into your journeys, which are, are pretty interesting. We've got uh, starting and stopping, experimenting, um, new-ish, you know, you're all on, the, on this on this really, uh, really interesting journey. Um, I really can't wait for everyone to see what it is that you're making, which we're going to do right now. We are going to uh, have a quick uh, little tour uh, of the exhibition to sort of let everyone uh, watch and get a taste of, and hopefully uh, this will entice you to come on in and see it in person. If we can open it. Okay. And I should say um, that the uh, silk purse is open. Uh, Wednesday uh, through Friday from 12 to 2 and Saturday and Sunday from 12 to 4. So stop by uh, any of those times and check out uh, check out this artwork. So here's a little here's a little sample of it. Okay. So as you uh, come into the gallery from the street side, this is kind of the, the view that you'll get. We've filled up the walls um, quite full with all of this really wonderful artwork. So uh, we start off then as you come in, we've got some uh, great work uh, from Douglas here. Uh, some great uh, wood carvings. It's a fantastic bench that he said you can you can sit on when you come to see it. Yes, yeah, so there's some some examples of this really really wonderful grain and cut of this wood. And you use a lot of different kinds of wood, right, Douglas? Yeah, Stephen, thanks. Uh, I tried to use anywhere from reclaimed wood, uh, fallen wood that I've milled myself, to st store-bought wood, uh, walnut, oak, maple, uh, poplar, uh, pine, all, all sorts of wood that actually, it has a character of itself once I, I carve it. It's never exactly what I planned out, but uh, like it's, it's got so much character wood and using it is is really an, an art form in itself for sure. Yeah. This was an interesting exhibit to put up because there are so many uh, different shapes and sizes of pieces. Uh, so it was pretty fun figuring out how, how it could all work together. You did a great job, Stephen. Oh, well, thanks. We had fantastic pieces to work with, so it made it it made it fun. Uh, a lot of people question how I can actually make some of these pieces uh, with limited uh, amount of time it would take, and it um, it actually would be next to impossible to do these inlays uh, by hand. So there's there's different techniques used with the CNC machine. Uh, I utilize many different kinds of, of bits and sizes. So something like that to, to uh, even something that's rounded on the top to get the different textures and flows. Thanks. Interesting. Yeah, and then we get to uh, then we get to see uh, Netta's uh, fantastic calligraphy. 
which is, it goes beyond even just uh, calligraphy in, into, into painting, into abstraction. Thank you. I truly appreciate you having um, that uh, one piece that was fairly traditional um, to compare it to the rest of your work that's on display. I think that that makes a really great connection for the audience. And for me to remember when I start. <laughs> oh, and you've been so kind, Netta, too, uh, to include um, to include the titles in Farsi so that we can have that on the label for people to read as well as the English title. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that would be nice to let them know which verse I used. I get inspired with the with theme of love, love of the universe, love of community, love of society, love of people, everything. Um, and these themes of some of the Rumi's uh, poems are mainly theme of love. So I use Rumi mainly, Hafez, uh, but mainly Rumi. Interesting. And like the, the carvings that we saw from Doug and that we'll see from Linda, your paintings have a lot of texture and life to them too. They're not just, they're not just flat. There's, there's a lot going on in there as well. Yeah, it has a different layers of work. So it's um, each of them, I use different techniques and I use different medias and different tools that I'll show you later maybe. And uh, yeah, some of them, created some texture that I love it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and now we're on to, uh, on to Linda's pieces, these really interesting uh, relief paintings. Such such bold uh, bold colors, Linda. <laughs> it's also interesting to see uh, the different sort of the mixed media approach to it. It's not just um, the Sintra, you know, like some of these pieces have little little bits of glass or or other objects in them. So it's it really adds a, a whole other sort of dimensionality to it. Yeah, I consider the frame part of the piece too, like it's part of the sculptural quality of it. Oh yeah, 100%. Beautiful. Even though you're all working in very different media, um, coming from very different points of view and, and, and backgrounds, there's a real uh, elegance uh, that ties all of your work together. Everything is very, very graceful, and there's a real sense of, uh, of organicness to it. Even you know when you get into some uh, some of uh, like uh, Doug's pieces that have a bit more of a, a, a stiffer geometry to it there's still a really wonderful uh, organic natural feel to everything so i think i think your work together makes for a really pleasant uh viewing experience um it's it's visual it's tactile it's it's uh, it's it's muted colors it's bold colors it's 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 a great journey that you're offering everybody okay so uh now we are going to dive a little deeper uh, into the artwork and into the artists and their process. They've each selected uh, one piece that's on display that they're gonna talk about that's going to sort of give you a bit more insight uh, into uh, who they are as an artist and, and how they go about creating their work and um, kind of the sort of the statement uh, from this collection of, uh, that they are showing here in Shared Wonders. So let's start, uh, let's start in the opposite uh, alphabetical direction. So that's gonna be you, Linda. 
Okay. <laughs> Here we are now. Here is your fantastic piece. Yeah, I've talked a little bit about the way that I construct my work, but I haven't mentioned yet really the underlying uh, concept behind it. So my purpose in creating work actually is to process the awe and wonder I observe in the world around me. So I have a quote here because I think it really sums up perfectly uh, how I feel about it. And it's from author and researcher Brene Brown in her recent uh, book, Atlas of the Heart. Both awe and wonder are often experienced in response to nature, art, music, spiritual experiences or ideas. In the midst of these moments, we can feel overwhelmed by the vastness of something that it's almost un incomprehensible. It almost feels like what we're witnessing can't be true. Like we're seeing something that doesn't fit and how we move through and understand our everyday lives. Awe and wonder are essential to the human experience. Wonder fuels our passion for exploration and learning for curiosity and adventure. So I experience both awe and wonder when I think about the vastness of time, when I think about what came before and what's going to be coming in the future. Both natural things, cultural things, just the enormity and scope of what we exist in. Uh, I've been responding to this theme for a very, very long time. In fact, when I look at the, at the work I did at art school in the 80s, I see that there, but at the time I didn't recognize it. And it's taken me a very long time to understand it. And just recently uh, I was able to put it into words. So this is what I'm addressing now. So my current body of work speaks to the longevity and endurance of nature. Um, I'm using species that have existed for a very, very long time, such as ginkgo, fern, magnolia, et cetera, as symbols for the longevity and persistence of nature. And in this piece, I've used the fern. Of course, you can't think about the natural world without thinking about how we are impacting it, but I'm trying to take a hopeful turn here in the fact that nature has its own logic, its own persistence, and if we just give it a chance, it's gonna be fine. It will continue in whatever form it's gonna take. So ultimately, I do feel it's a, a hopeful message, although it doesn't happen to be, um, I don't want to be negative, I guess is what I'm saying, but that doesn't mean that we can be complacent. So speaking specifically about this piece, there's some elements that you'll see recurring in how I address this. There's an element of timelessness. It's not day, it's not night. The lighting is in the middle tones, like the colors I choose tend to be mid color, like something that you would have uh, at sunrise or sunset. Um, so it's in between back to how I was playing with space as well, being in between. It's a non-specific space. It could be a pond, it could be a forest, it could be a stone. It's flat, but then it could also be deep. Um, it has its own spatial logic, but it's not logical 3D space. There's no horizon line. Like it could be floating in space or it could be on the ground. You just don't know. And I sort of see it as being like a frozen still in this huge continuum. Like, the elements are still, but it really could be animated, but it's just a snapshot of this whole process that's happening. Um, it's growing, it's emerging. And there's a lot of symbolic elements as well too. You'll see that the curling lines that um, you know have the yellow uh, centers, uh, they're all connected throughout the, the fern imagery. And it sort of um, represents the unfurling that you would have as ferns are growing, but it's also connecting them all together as if it was through different generations. And uh, the central image, uh, the focus, um, it could be ripples in a pond, um, but it also could be representing the, the time that's happening uh, as things grow and expand and emerge. Um, so in terms of 
creating the, the fern outlines, I did actually use a real fern leaf that I scavenged and I used it as the outline. Um, and this is very important to me because this is an echo of something that exists. I've now made a fossil out of something that actually lived in this world. And now it's embedded in this um, other thing. Um, so it's a, another level of symbology. Uh, it's a preservation. And in the center, um, I've used a glass sculpture. And this is um, something I'm very, is new and exciting for me because I find, again, it's this illusion, um, but it's also very much present. And I like how it distorts the imagery underneath. Like if you look into it, it's like a, a gazing ball. It reflects and refracts all the um, painting around it to make it transmutes it that much more. And I've played a little bit with the, the surface texture. Um, you can't really see it in this photo too well, uh, but there's little divots that I've done throughout the areas where the lines are. And this is to represent uh, spores of ferns. So again, it's another level of symbology, but it's abstracted. So um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, themes that you'll see in, in my work. Uh, I use layering as a metaphor for time as well. You don't really see it as much in this piece as you do in others. Um, and in one of the pieces um, that you saw in the, the walkthrough, there is uh, dripping elements. Um, and again, that was a frozen moment in time. It was something that was in motion, but then it was frozen. So it, it just keeps reinforcing that, that theme of timelessness. All done. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Linda. No, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot to explore. There's definitely a lot to, to think about and, and ponder you know, what's the meaning, why this choice, why this shape, why this texture, why this color. Excellent, awesome. Uh, so next, uh, we are going to see a piece uh, from Netta. Okay, thanks. Awesome, thank you. So maybe first I'll show some of the tools that I use, then I'll explain a little bit about my works. So these are um, the, uh, I don't know what it's called in English, but they are bamboos that we just um, shape the tip so that I can write with them. So this is, mainly the traditional tool that I use with ink uh, that you can see on that traditional um, artwork. And then for my modern artwork, I move to some other tools like this or even like a ice cream stick that I shape the tip so that I can write and this is a, like a balsa wood or something. So I've shaped them and I then write with them. And then some of the painting tools like regular painting brushes and this kind of things. In addition to acrylic painting, inks, uh, I don't know, some um, substance to spray and some gesso sometimes. Yeah, so for this one, um, I started on canvas and I was thinking of finding some connection to my audience. And I was really curious about uh, how they would feel by looking at it. At it. So I, um, use, I uh, inspired with that verse from Rumi, that is theme of love again, that I came to stay, you are my love, this kind of thing. It's hard to translate it uh, exactly, but it has theme of love. And um, I put it up on Insta and I asked my audience, how do you feel? What do you see? because I understand that not everybody can recognize the letters or the forms 
they cannot read it, but I just wanted to see how they actually connected it. And many people responded that we feel some peace, we see ocean. <laughs> Most of the answer was around that calmness, peace and ocean. So that was interesting to me that, uh, yeah, I, I made it. I was able to connect to uh, more people with my peace. Um, yeah, I think that's it. If you have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. It's it is very interesting to to think about, you know, that there's there are letters in here. There are there are these these forms that that could create a language and it's it's kind of up to us uh, to sort of to find them and to figure out what what that message is. Thank you. Excellent. Awesome. So now, uh, now we're going to see uh, a piece from uh, from Doug. Thanks, Stephen. So, this piece is walnut with oak inlay, and as you can see, they're fiddleheads from ferns as well. Uh, I'm inspired by nature and I'm also inspired by sacred geometry. So sacred geometry is found throughout nature. And in this piece, I wanted to show movement and a new, a growth. And I think this expresses it very well. Like it, it actually is subtle and uh, simple, yet showing the complexity of nature unfolding in front of us. Uh, the technique I use to create these inlays, I, I wanted to produce, uh, I wanted the, I wanted people to, to uh, wonder how I actually could do it. And I could only really do something with this kind of detailing with a C, my CNC machine. And I wanted to just briefly show people what it is and how it works. It only take a minute. But as you can see, uh, inside here, there's a router mounted. And in on the router, I can use different shapes and sizes, like I showed earlier, of, of bits to to form different, let's say, to form different textures. I don't know if you can see that nicely or not. Right? And so I'll, I'll use, on an inlay, I use the technique with a 45 degree bit to create the female part and then the reverse mirror image, sandwich them together. To, and then there's, a, I don't want to give away all the trade secrets, right? But uh, uh, in the past, like I said, I wanted to create pieces that people will, will actually wonder how I did it. Uh, so, like, let's see, for example, this piece here, the detailing in it, I couldn't really do that with a, with a carving piece uh, by hand. It would, it's, it's next to impossible. So, uh, with regards to the machine here, I, I, I'll just show you briefly. So I can move it or I program the computer and then the computer will move it or I can move it by hand. I'll just show you briefly. So that can go up back and forward, left and right and up and down. Similar to 3D printing technology. And uh, it has opened up an infinite, infinite uh, amount of possibilities for me. So like I said, I'm just at the beginning of this journey. Uh, there's a whole software aspect to it. There is a technical drawing aspect as well as just creativity. It is, it is, uh, and I'm blessed to be able to, to be able to use this and to be able to uh, 
have the support of my family and friends and to get to on this journey. So thank you. Thanks for thanks for sharing, Doug. Yeah, thank thank all of you for sharing those those insights and uh, and behind the scenes uh, kind of look. There's uh, a lot of uh, of talk of of the different kinds of of wonder, you know, wanting to instill wonder, um, trying to capture uh, wonder. Uh, it's that's a it's a really interesting uh, concept to try and trying to express. Um, but I think you've all done that. Uh, Pretty, pretty fantastically. Awesome. And uh, tools, I really appreciate uh, seeing the, the machine, the CNC machine, seeing the brushes and the carving tools and seeing the, 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 the sketch on Sintra, you know, seeing, seeing all of that because uh, the medium and the tools you're using seem to be very key to each of you, uh, to your work. And it seems to be coming from a, which some of your work touches on this, uh, these things from the past and, and, and bringing them to the present and possibly even the future. Um, and kind of this idea of taking these traditional crafts, um, but then changing them, altering them, elevating them, um, bringing uh, your own experiences into them. What is it about um, the types, I'll ask each of you this, what is it about the the types of tools um, or or traditions uh, that you're working with um, that excites you, that draws you to them. Um, why not do something else? You know, why not use a different medium or or a different skill set? Why 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 this? I'll toss that up to anyone can answer. Well, personally, I would like if, we, if you don't mind me going first, ladies. Sure. I want to do something that nobody else is doing. And the learning curve on this these techniques is is very steep, and I I'm just hoping to, like I said, bring out the curiosity in people to to stare at my piece and wonder how in the heck I, I was able to even do that. So, and I think that there's a, a a future in this type of art as well. Is it unusual to use wood in a CNC machine? Like, is it an unusual uh, material to, to use with that te technology? Oh, thanks for the question, Linda. Uh, well, we, you'd be surprised at how much CNC technology is used in manufacturing all around us. So to take that and to apply it with, with wood, uh, like I was saying earlier, wood takes its own form many many different shapes even when you think you've got something planned out so uh, typically no in in manufacturing i don't there's not too much but you could you can see anywhere from like spindles on uh stairwell stairways or uh there there are so many examples around this if you if you just know what to look for <laughs> Always loving new ways of using materials. Yes. Yeah, that, that really gets my, my fires lit, that's for sure. That's great. And yeah, like um, sort of on that vein, um, this, this Sintra that you're using, everyone comes in asking, uh, you know, what is that? Is that a kind of wood? Uh, how, how, how does she carve into that? Yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. Why, why come to, to that? Um, that medium? Well, you know, learning from others is very, very important because um, you can really fast track your knowledge by asking questions and just seeing what other people are doing. So um, I happened to, you know, um, go to Granville Island, see my printmaking buddies, and um, lo and behold, people were using Sintra to make prints out of. Um, you know, relief printmaking. So, you know, you would carve it away and ink it up and put it through the press. But, you know, when I sort of um, touched it and I was like, oh my goodness, that's carved so easily, you know, um, you can score it, you can, it's, but it's very durable and it's designed to hold paint. So I'm like, this is like the perfect stuff for what I want to do. And uh, that was very exciting. 
and you can buy huge sheets of it and, you know, four by eight sheets. And so I find the frame, then I cut down the board. And so it's, it's a, you know, it's a sort of a process as I create my work because it's all these little found serendipities. You know, somebody will give me a cast off frame and, you know, I wasn't planning on working on that shape or that size, but there it is and that's fabulous. And so I just respond to that and the piece just grows from there. Fascinating. There's there's this great uh, response that you all seem to have from some little key of information, whether it's the the shape of of a fern leaf or a frame or mm -hmm. or the grain of a wood or for Netta for um, poetry. Um, why why these specific um, lines and verses do you choose? Is is there is there a method or is it just kind of that speaks to you at that moment or that's going to be the feeling you want to express? The ladder, like um, I, I look at some of the poets and I just one of them uh, connects with me. So I pick them and I start for my process. I mm, do some conceptual design in my mind first, and then I will think about how do I want to put it on canvas. And for me, because um, I wanted to play with the colors too, and it's a kind of calligraphy painting instead of a traditional calligraphy. So I uh, needed to use the other tools, modern tools to just create some of these with like a painting brush or so. So with this traditional one, I cannot work with like the color full acrylic or uh, anything. This works only with ink. So yeah, <laughs> I hope I answered the question. Oh, definitely. Thanks, Nova. Yeah, no, that was great. Yeah. What I like about the fact of the painting style that you're that you have, it works so well with the calligraphy because the calligraphy is this beautiful abstraction and you're just uh, expanding on that with your your technique. Thank you, Linda. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of that going on. This idea of of expanding and taking something like because you all start it sounds like you all start with a with a design. You know, um, you've got something mapped out, some kind of idea, but then everything just kind of builds and and layers upon that. It's, it sounds like creating a piece is is isn't necessarily super cut and dry for each of you, right? Like you'll kind of just it builds and builds and and just kind of happy accents as one of you had said usually <laughs> I've been a long period where i didn't have many happy accents I had a lot of dead ends you know but <laughs> lately it's been pretty much happy accidents that's one that's fantastic to see such uh such growth uh and such, such a journey uh, that you've all been on so yeah, so as we said, uh, Shared Wonders, Timeless Exploration is on at the Silk Purse Art Center in West Vancouver until April the 2nd. Uh, if you're watching this in that time, please come on down, uh, check it out, see it in person. Uh, these videos and photos um, uh, really don't do it justice. You, there's a real feast for your eyes uh, when you come in just to see all the colors and textures and shapes and it's, it's a really stunning uh, and, and I think contemplative exhibit. Um, we've had a number of visitors come in and just, just stay and stare uh, and, and be with the pieces. It really, it really gives people a lot to think about, not only in how did you make it, because that's one of the big questions for all three of you is, is everyone's like, well, how did they make this? How did they do that? Um, but also uh, there's just a real uh, presence to your artwork that I think gives people uh, the opportunity and, and moment and, and to pause uh, throughout their day and contemplate that way. So thank you all for providing such fantastic artwork and thank you everyone for watching. Uh, yeah, come on down and see Shared Wonders featuring the amazing artwork of Douglas Krieger, Nada Shoje, and Linda Safidi. Uh, and thank you. So Stephen, can I add just one quick thing? Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, I'll be donating half of any of my proceeds from the sale of this show to the West Vancouver SPCA. That's wonderful. That's yeah. great to know, Doug. Yes. So everyone come on down and buy a piece. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all Thank for you.
Thank you. Sharing your, your insights and your inspirations and your techniques and your tools and your background and for sharing this fantastic artwork with the community. Thanks, Steve. Awesome. So, for everyone watching until, oh, and if you want to learn more about these artists in the description of this video below, um, there are links to their websites um, and Instagram. So you can follow them and see what they're up to on a, on a regular basis. One more. Yeah. So since this is um, happening um, at similar time with uh, Persian New Year, so I yeah. just want to take this opportunity to say Happy New Year to everyone who celebrates no rules. And I wish a very prosperous and um, lovely New Year and uh, all the best for Iran. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Neda. That was that was lovely. Thank you. Yes. Happy Nehru's, everyone. So take care, everyone. And uh, please come on down and see Shared Wonders, Timeless Exploration at the Silk Purse Arts Center.